Hey everyone, it's Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, I specialize in the world of food writing. I believe that there is a story on your plate and culinary adventures are just my favorite thing. I read predominantly nonfiction, but I do dabble in the world of foodie fiction from time to time, whether that's a cozy murder mystery like chocolate chip cookie murders or just general fiction, young adult, and sometimes some rom-com as well. So I am here with my... I have, this is the third video I have filmed today where I have said it is August. It is April. I am here with my April book haul. I recognize that April 30th is Independent Bookstore Day. Any per book purchased at that haul is going to just be slid into May at this point. But I wanted to show you everything else I acquired this month. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. Of these eight books, only three are brand new. Five were purchased used. So first up on the list, we have Forked, a new standard for American dining by Saru Jayaraman. This came from Open Books for $6. So this comes from Oxford University Press and was published in 2016. It is a James Beard Award recipient for food writing. So let me give you a little insight to what this book is about. The restaurant critic can tell you about the chef. The menu tells you about the ingredients. Now who's going to tell you how the restaurant treats the people serving your meal? From James Beard Leadership Award winner Saru Jayar From James Beard Leadership Award winner Saru Jayaraman, Forked is an enlightening examination of what we don't talk about when we talk about restaurants. Is the line cook working through a case of stomach flu because he doesn't get any sick days? Is the busser not being promoted because of his accent? Is the server tolerating sexual harassment because tips are her only source of income? as most corporate restaurants continue to set low standards for worker wages and benefits. A new class of chefs and restaurants, restaurateurs, is fostering sustainable wages and working conditions, including moving away from the historical use of tips as a substitute for wages. Forked offers an insider's view of the highest and lowest scoring restaurants for worker pay and benefits in each sector of the restaurant industry, including in-depth profiles of the chefs, restaurateurs, and companies that are bringing change to the table. Now, for some context, a couple of years ago, leadership in the restaurant world, such as Tom Colicchio, went away with tipping and instead included a default gratuity in your on your check at the end of egg, at the end of your meal to help level the playing field between front of house and back of house. Front of house oftentimes will rely predominantly on tips, but the back of house, the chefs, the line cooks, they don't have access to that pot of money. And these changes were met with both praise and also a lot of pushback from restaurant culture. Now this is in 2016, which is prior to the outbreak of the coronavirus. And I think it will be interesting to look at this and also reflect on what has changed now that a pandemic has fundamentally changed the way we look at our essential workers. Next up from Open Books that I got for $7.50, you and I eat the same on the countless ways food and cooking connect us to one another. This is a collection of stories. It is edited, edited by Chris Ying and the foreword is by Renee Redzepi. I have seen this book around for a couple of years. I love the cover. It's one of, it's a thicker cover. It doesn't really have a book sleeve. It's a bound book, but it, it's pretty cool. And this is actually from MAD, of all people. MAD dispatches furthering our ideas about food. Good food is the common ground shared by all of us, and immigration is fundamental to good food. In 19 thoughtful and engaging essays and stories, You and I Eat the Same explores the way in which cooking and eating connects us across the cultural and political borders, making the case that we should think about cuisine as a collective human effort in which we all benefit from the movement of people, ingredients, and ideas. This... I think I'm going to love. I have really enjoyed the world of anthologies within food writing because you can pick up a story, you can put it down, you can pick up a story and come back. It has one on it, like volume one, which makes me wonder if more of these will be distributed in the future. And these kinds of collections of stories are what inspired me to create those read and eat boxes because I think food is a universal connector but it's so vastly different across different cultures and different parts of the world that I want to share these kinds of stories with other people. I also love that the cover is green. I know 
I never who knew I'd be such a visual person when I buy books, but super excited to also pick this book up used. Next up, we have The Intrepid Adventures of a Professional Eater, Fork It Over by Alan Richman, 12-time winner of the James Beard Award. So, Alan Rickman is a contributing writer for GQ, Condé Nast, and Bon Appetit, as well as the newly appointed Dean of Food Journalism at the French Culinary Institute. He lives in Westchester County, New York, with his wife, Letty Tug, wine, a wine columnist and editor, and their two dogs, Sophie and Rudy. The dogs love Alan's cooking. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. So this is a famous food writer, and it's funny because when I looked up his name, Alan Richman, Google was like, do you mean Alan Rickman? And I was like, no, I don't actually mean Snape. I really do mean a boring food writer um, because it like pushed it down to the bottom. And they're like, here's Alan Rick Richman's Wikipedia page. You sure you don't want Snape? And I was like, no, I want the food writer guy. It was, it was kind of a funny moment. Let me read the back of the book. Um, first off, the quote on the back, if you want to get a vibe for this man, food is life, the rest is parsley. He sampled pig's tail in Shanghai, veal stew in Djibouti, and fish burgers in Tel Aviv. He's wisecracked his way into Louis Fracan's Chicago eatery and flunked out of the Paul Bocuse Institute in Lyon. From his first pastrami sandwich as a kid in Philadelphia to the jungles of Vietnam, where he was the only soldier who gained weight, and the three-star restaurants in Paris, Richmond has dined in an unlike in more unlikely locations and devoured more tasting menus than any of other three food critics combined. From practical advice, don't order the steak at a seafood restaurant. However, seafood at a steak restaurant at a seafood at a steakhouse is never bad. Details of the road, interviewing political dis dissidents in Cuba, and perhaps the most dangerous, sharing a candlelit dinner with Sharon Stone. Fork it over is a delicious reading that keeps the reader chuckling. I'm super excited. This is published by Harper Perennial, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. Next up is actually a new 2021 release. This came out at the latter half of last year and I did not pick it up. I got it used for $11. The Kitchen Whispers, Cooking with the Wisdom of Our Friends by Dorothy Collins with a foreword by Danny Meyer. So this is a used book that's a little bit more scuffed up on the cover, um, but nevertheless is a hardcover book. A tribute to the cooks we've learned from and their messages that guide our hands still in the kitchen. The cooking lessons that stick to us are rarely those we read in books or learn through blog posts or quick paced videos. They're the ones we absorb as we spend time in, with good cooks in the kitchen, recalling and repeating their words and movements. Dorothy Collins, the founder, Dorothy Collins, the founding editor in, whew, Dorothy Collins, the founding editor in chief of Savoir magazine, calls those inadvertent teachers our kitchen whispers, people who, consciously or not, pass on their cooking wisdom. Our kitchen whispers help us to become the cooks we are. Our kitchen whispers help us to. Our kitchen whispers help make us the cooks we become. Their remembered food wisdom, Dorothy believes, stays with us, guides us, reassures us every time we make a particular dish. Next up, we actually have a funny story for the book 10 Restaurants That Changed America by Paul Friedman, also with an introduction from Danny Meyer. So I have read a different Paul Friedman book. Um, Rosie and I buddy read a different book by Paul Friedman last, about this time last year. This is his other food writing book, or one of many. Honestly, it is a tome. Um, last year, there was a 50% off sale at Open Books, and I bought way too many books. And I actually sent them to my sisters and my mother with notes that said, please give these to me as gifts over the next couple of years. I just went to see my sister over the Easter weekend, and she said she was in her classroom looking at the books on the shelf and saw this book and went, there is no way any high school student is going to read this. This must have been meant for you, and I brought it to the school by accident, so here you go. Um, so there you go. Uh, it was a book I totally forgot I had purchased, which is kind of cool. I had, she gave me a very pretty bookmark, a watercolor bookmark to have, and I'm very excited. The story, the book is rather self-explanatory. 10 Restaurants That Changed America. A couple on the front, Howard Johnson's, Chez Panisse, The Mandarin, Delmonico's, The Four Seasons. I'm very excited. It is very big, um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it. Let me know if I should do a reading vlog with that one because it is so big, 
or maybe I break it up into 10 parts. I don't know. I'm afraid if I break it up into 10 parts, it'll be too short, but very interested for your thoughts. So those were five used books slash one was a gift. And now we're moving on to three brand new books I bought. I will be completely transparent. I stress bought books. It was my dad's birthday. This is my second year without my dad on his birthday. Uh, he passed last January and I honestly guys, I wanted to do something nice for myself. Last year I shaved my head and got purple put in my, it was, at the time it was blue, I got color put in my hair. So I want to do something every year to make dad's birthday fun and not such a sad time. This year I bought some books, bought them through bookshop.org, which if you're not going to buy your books used, don't forget to use bookshop.org. There is no reason you need to be buying books from Amazon anymore. I don't know if you act, how many people actually you take advantage of two day prime delivery to actually read the book in two days, not me. So consider using an organization like bookshop.org where 10% of your purchase is used to support independent bookstores in the United States. They just celebrated having do they just celebrated donating and they just celebrated a huge milestone. They have now donated over $20 million to in independent bookstores since launching their platform. So that was pretty cool. And I also got 20% off for the $20 million threshold goal that they had just hit. So the first book I bought was For the Love of Cod by Eric Dregny, a father and son search for Norwegian happiness. First off, this color, this cover, it's just pretty cool. It is a short book, just, let's see, um, under 200 pages, very short. So very excited to read this very much about the journey of happiness came out in 2021. So a pretty new release. I know it's weird to say that because we're, we're almost in May of 2022, which January, February, March, April, May, we're like almost halfway through the year already. I don't know where time is going. It needs to stop. Very, very excited for this. It's a travel memoir slash food memoir of a search for happiness, cod. It, it just looks super cute. Another book I got this month, Satisfaction Guaranteed, How Zingerman's Built a Corner Deli into a Global Food Community by Micheline Maynard, who is also the, sell, uh, the author of The Selling of the American Economy. I have seen this book around. It came out earlier this year. It was on one of my most anticipated release, anticipated releases list, so I really wanted to get it. Um, I love delis, corner delis. I've read whole books on pastrami and uh, delis around the United States and globally. This is a 2022 release from Simon and Schuster. It is a lively look at the inception, growth, and future and unique management style of Zingerman's, a beloved specialty food store with a global reach. Certain businesses are legendary, exerting immense influence in their field. Zingerman's is an Zingerman's in Ann Arbor, Michigan is one of those places. It's a flagship deli that has expanded into a community of more than a dozen businesses, including a hugely successful mail order operation, restaurants and bakery, coffee, roastery, creamery, candy maker and event space, transforming Ann Arbor into a destination for food lovers. Founded in 1982 by Paul Saginaw and Ari Wineswig. Wineswig? Wineswig. Singerman's is a company who reach, whose reach spans all corners of the food world. Famous for its generally portioned deli sandwiches, fresh bread, and colorful coffee, all locally produced, Zingerman's is also widely celebrated for its superb customer service and employee quality. The company culture is one of respect and innovation while maintaining very high standards. Every employee has access to the financial records, everyone has a voice, and everyone is heard. Zingerman's has legions of enthusiastic customers and its business principles have been admired, analyzed, and adapted among sectors. I heard of Zingerman's while reading a book called Save the Deli, and it was one of the examples of the next generation of delis. So it's really cool. And this is what I love about food writing, to read in an anthology about delis, one name that sticks out, and then to find that they have released their own book about the deli, or at least like a book about the deli. It's not written by the two owners. I am very excited. Hopefully if I like it, like I've never even been to Ann Arbor, Michigan, maybe it's time to go. And then final book of my April haul is Slime, How Algae Created Us, Plagued Us, and Just Might Save Us by Ruth Cassinger. Uh, this book, I was turned on to this book after reading The Future of Food. Um, last month, it was one of the books that was referenced 
And Ruth Kastinger is the author of Paradise Under Glass and A Garden of Marvels, and her writing has appeared in the Washington Post, The Atlantic, Natural History, and National Geographic Explorer. So this is algae, this is definitely going to be food science, food writing, and also just nature and science in general. So what is this book about? It's obviously about algae, but I'll read the back for you. There are many algae on Earth as stars, there are as many algae on Earth as stars in the universe, and they have been essential to life on our planet for eons. Algae created the Earth we know today in its oxygen-rich atmosphere, abundant oceans, and coral reefs. Crude oil is made of dead algae, and algae are the ancestors of all plants. Today, seaweed production is a multi-billion industry, with algae hard at work to make your sushi, chocolate milk, beer, paint, toothpaste, shampoo, and so much more. In Slime, we'll meet the algae innovators working towards a sustainable future, from seaweed farmers in South Korea to scientists using algae to clean the dead zones of our waterways, to the entrepreneurs fighting to bring algae fuel and plastics to the market. Full of lively, surprising science and history, Slime takes readers on an around-the-world, behind-the-scenes, and into-the-kitchen tour. Whether you thought algae was just the gunk in your fish tank or the seaweed you eat in your oatmeal, Slime will delight and amaze with its stories of good, the bad, and the up and coming. I am very excited to read this. I've mentioned before, I'm very, in, this year seems to be the year of food tech, which is super exciting for me to learn about. I have heard it's either algae or seaweed or something in this space is known to help reduce methane. There's been studies, excuse me, going on right now where the introduction of even 10% of algae and seaweed into cows' diets reduces methane emissions by up to 70%. So this is a really powerful part of our universe that I don't know a lot about, and I'm very excited to read. All right, those are the eight books I have picked up in the month of April. Five of them used, three brand new. I like that proportion. I am still trying to get the number a little bit lower. And of course, Independent Bookstore Day is Saturday, April 30th. So hopefully I don't go too, too, too crazy. I do have a gift card for an independent bookstore, and that's kind of my goal. Like, let me just take the gift card that I have, use it at the independent bookstore, use it on Independent Bookstore Day, and I will be doing my part to support those bookstores I care about. Don't forget that if you don't live near an independent bookstore or you don't have time to physically get there on Saturday, April 30th, a lot of independent bookstores and bookshop.org will also have promotions online. If there's a book you want, have your independent bookstore order it for you and pick it up from them. Know that your dollar is better spent with a independent bookstore or a local bookstore than it is in an Amazon pocket. By supporting a local bookstore, about 80% of your cash or money that you give to the business stays within your local community, which is good for you, good for the town you live in, and good for other small businesses. Let me know in the comments below which book is most interesting. Are there any I'm, you must have a review about? And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Uh -huh.